This is Anfisa from Retina Coach and today I'm going to talk about endolaser in retinal detachment surgery. Endolaser photocoagulation is used to create scars around retinal tears, drainage retinotomy or for treatment of suspicious areas without any identified breaks. Some surgeons prefer intraoperative 360 degrees prophylactic endolaser in every retinal detachment surgery. But several studies showed that extensive laser treatment could affect pupil size by causing the injury of ciliary nerves. The choice of the laser technique of course depends on the surgeon's preferences and experience. But there are general principles. First, laser on retinal detachment surgery is usually performed under air or perfluorocarbon liquid after retinal reattachment. Adequate subretinal fluid aspiration allows the retinal pigment epithelium effectively absorb the laser energy for further scar formation. Second, laser burns are generally done in a few rows peripherally or adjacent to the margins of the retinal defect. Third, the burn spot should be not too strong and not too large. The laser is usually titrated to an observable retinal whitening. The size of the spot, the power and the duration could be set in advance in the vitrectomy system and regulated depending on the case. The size and strength of the laser burn also depend on the distance of the laser tip from the retina. The closer the probe is to the retina, the smaller the size of the spot and the stronger the burn. The too strong laser can cause retinal defect and bleeding. Fourth, scleral indentation can assist with peripheral laser. Switching the laser probe with an infusion line in the inferior scleral cannula can assist in performing laser in the superior part of the retina. Several types of laser probes exist. The most common are straight laser probe, curved laser probe, laser probe with extendable curved tip and illuminated laser probe. A straight laser probe allows easy insertion through the scleral cannulas. This probe should be used with caution in phacic patients to avoid lens injury. A curved laser probe allows to reduce the possibility of the lens trauma when reaching the contralateral side and far periphery. But this probe should be carefully inserted and removed through a scleral cannula because it can be accidentally pulled. There is a probe with an extendable curved tip. This instrument combines benefits from both straight and curved laser probes. On the one hand, by releasing the handle, the probe goes back in a straight position that can be safely inserted and removed. On the other hand, the extendable curved tip allows laser even in the far periphery. The illuminated laser probe has an optical fiber integrating lightening and laser abilities. Therefore, this probe eliminates dependency on the separate light pipe and allows surgeon independent scleral depression for peripheral retinal breaks during the laser. In this video, you can compare illumination derived from the laser probe with illumination derived from the separate light pipe. As you can see, the illuminated laser probe provides a small field of view of the treated area. Therefore, its usage can be challenging for surgeons who are not used to it. More videos you can find in our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it to stay updated and visit our Retina Coach website. Thank you for your attention.